Welcome back to this episode of Trapping Tuesdays. Today we're going to be talking about fur handling. This episode is really mainly going to be revolving around fleshing knives, but we're also just going to lump in the other things that we use um, to go along with that. Um, I do not have any real knives. I mean, like, whenever I say real knives, I mean, like, knives. Skinning knives. Skinning knives. Because I don't think that really matters. Um, I use old timers. Um, we also use some weeby knives. I don't have any here, but I will say one thing. If you're looking for quality, we, and they're not a sponsor, but Weeby makes, they just make top of the line knives. Dexter makes good knives. We, I think Weeby Dexter is actually the same company, but they, they make they make great knives. It don't matter, matter whether it's fleshing knives, fur knives, they're all great. Um, we don't have any here to show you though. I just wanted to put that in there, but I am going to be honest with you. I gave this, well, this was dad's and we just never used it. I gave this to Adam a couple years ago. I think this is a caribou fleshing knife. I don't even think that they make them anymore because I couldn't find them online. I know it was like an $80 fleshing knife whenever we got it, but we'll go over that in a second. We've got the good old Faithful, the Necker Knife Model 600. We've got one of the old El Cheapo $10 starter kit fleshing knives. Um, and then off to the side, we've got a Lifetime Tail Stripper. We've got um, a Fur Comb. And then, uh, who makes that? Is that Stanley Hallbecker's Tail Zipper? Uh, I don't remember. It's a tail zipper. I can't remember who makes it, they but it, good. yeah, they work. Um, uh, we'll go over those three here in a second, just real quick. But the main thing we want to talk about today is flushing knives. I am going to tell you something. I would consider myself a professional fur handler. If you don't consider me that, that's fine. I don't care. I've watched him in action. <laughs> but I, I, I've been putting up fur with Dad since I was 10 years old. Um, it's not, I'm, I'm fairly decent at it. So I've used all kinds of knives, fleshing knives, skinning knives, fur handling tools. Um, Dad got this because we are beaver trappers. So this caribou fleshing knife, that's the reason he got it. Everyone had told him that if you put up lots of beavers, you want to get a caribou knife. Um, I don't like it because they don't have a dull side. And you'll understand what I mean by that in a second if you don't know what I'm talking about. They are razor sharp, which is nice for beaver because if you've ever put up big beaver, you know that unless you're a knee flusher, you need a sharp, a razor sharp blade to skim all that membrane off that they got. They don't, they're not a cocoon, they don't got fat you can shove off. Yeah, I mean, unless they're a baby beaver. If they're like a, a, a kit, then yeah, you don't even really need, need the sharp side. But if you're putting up animals that's got that tough membrane that you have to shave off, it is important to have a super sharp blade. But I was not a fan of this caribou knife. Um, Dad didn't like it, I didn't like it, that's why I gave it to Adam, and I don't even think you use it. No, nah, I just use it for decoration. <laughs> yeah, because it, it is it is, it is, is the prettiest knife, especially it was really pretty whenever it was brand new. It's going to get cleaned up here before long. But um, uh, we just didn't use it. Um, I'm going to come back to the Necker 600 in a second because I've got a lot more to say about it than anything else. Um, the El Cheapo fleshing knife. Um, I've used one of these like one time. Um, have you, you you've probably used it yeah, a good bit. So you, 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 you so you talk about this a little bit. Don't buy it. <laughs> That's a solid. It it works, but it's it's not what you want. Uh, so like this El Cheapo knife is like ten bucks. Yeah. You can't even buy a good pocket knife for ten bucks. So that should tell you something. Yeah. Um, you it get what you get what you pay for. Yeah. It doesn't. It's just like the Caribou. It doesn't have a dull side. It's got the sharp side. It's a small knife. It's probably not comfortable to use. It is not. Um, the handles aren't big enough. So if you're just getting started, I wouldn't get it. But like if you're price minded, this is substantially cheaper than any good fleshing knife you're yeah. going to get. Like I said, this is ten dollars. Um, if you're planning on catching a bunch of fur guys, don't fool around. Just go get you one of these Necker knives. Yeah, but now the Necker knives, they're like sixty or seventy bucks. They're not cheap, but. Oh. oh my gosh, they're so worth it. What a difference. You can use this knife on anything. It does not matter what you're skinning or fleshing, what you're putting up. I use one fleshing knife. I use the Necker 600 on everything. Beavers, coons, coyotes, rats, fox, bobcat, it doesn't matter. The knife doesn't give a crap. It has a sharp side, which is, which is, which is the upper end, and then it has a shoving side, which is the bottom. It's the dull side. Um, they are easy to sharpen. I just have one of those, what What do you call those? A ferrule rod, is that what those are called? Yeah. I, I use that, I run it across it before I, before I do every animal. Um, they come razor sharp, 
so you can use it right out of the box. They have comfortable handles on them. Um, uh, if you're flushing a bunch of coons, they'll get a little bit slickery, but that's, that's but everyone will because coons are so full of grease. But like I said, they're a lot more expensive. Um, so if you're being if you're per, uh, per, if you're wanting to be serious and proactive about putting up a lot of fur, you need to get a Necker 600. We are not sponsored by Necker 600. I just like them that much. That's all that we use. We tried to go to the knee fleshing system with the weedy knives, but and it works. I will tell you that it's better on your back, um, and I will tell you the guys that do it can do it just as fast, if not faster, than we can do it with a flushing beam. But if if you were raised like us on a beam, you need to get one of these. If you're a beaver trapper who's just learning, I would. I would say go get one of the Weeby Beaver fleshing knives and try to learn how to do it on your knee. I can do it both ways. I just prefer a, a fleshing beam. That's what I've always have done. So please, 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 please buy an Ecker 600. That's what you want to get. They are the best. Or let me say this, they're the best that I've used. Um, I know that Weeby makes other regular fleshing knives and everything that they make is high quality so it's probably just as good as one of these so anyone who uses a weeby flushing knife i'm not saying that they're bad i'm just saying i've never used one so that's all that i'm really going to say about the flushing do you have anything you want to add to any of these uh, i mean this is just it's the best yeah yeah you want it you need to get an i'm not the best system. fur handling but it don't take it don't take that long to do a kayak no the only thing that i will add about the necker 600 and this takes practice so let's say that you go out, let's say it's your first time ever trapping and you've never used one of these. If you catch a couple of coons and a couple of coyotes, do the coons first because these are sharp and if you don't learn the technique on how to shave, you're cutting right through that animal's hide. That's the only thing I'll say. And that's not the knife's fault. The knife is yeah. supposed to be able to do that. Yeah. But just practice. Practice makes perfect. Fur handling is not easy. Um, uh, I don't have any fur handling videos out yet. We've got some gland removal videos, but I'm going to get some fur handling videos out soon. Um, what our company, Windy Ridge Trapper, actually still has an older Facebook page. So if I, if if you watch this and you want to see some fur handling videos, my dad has some videos out on on our other Facebook page, not our Facebook page, our YouTube page, um, Windy Ridge Trapper. So you can go on there and see those if I don't have mine up yet. Um, but yeah, so no matter what you get, you need to practice. Yes, it's not the most fun thing in the world to put up fur, but you just got to practice. So we'll go ahead and we'll move on to tail pullers. Me and Adam, uh, this is the only one you use, right? That's, I've got two of them. The, the, yeah, I, I only use lifetime tail pullers. So they make all kinds of tail strippers. Um, they make the El Chensi ones that are like two bucks. They make all kinds of them. That yeah, are like, what you pay for. Yeah. I, br I broke several of the plastic ones said the hell with them. Yeah. So I went straight to those. And there's a reason these are called lifetime. If you take care of them, they are lifetime. Yeah. They don't hurt your hands nearly as bad as the other ones do. And with the other ones that don't close yeah. like these ones do, you'll rip tails. And in future videos, we'll show you the best techniques on how to get tails out. There's, there's, you can't just skin just till you get a little hole started. No, you've got to get. You've got to actually skin down the tail a little bit in order to use the pullers. I, I typically on 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 anything with a longer tail, such as fox, coyotes, or coons, I usually go halfway down the yes. tail. And then I'll rip it off. Yep, that's how I do. Um, uh, but like he said, and, we'll, and we'll, then, we'll go then, through that. And then that's when you—that's when this comes into play, so you can finish cutting it out after you pull the tail out. Yes, yes. Um, this is so that this is a fur comb. This is the most underrated tool in the fur shed. This may not seem like this is important at all. This might be the most important tool you can have, if especially if you're a land trapper. Anything you catch is going to have burrs in it. Yep. It doesn't matter while you're skinning the animal. But if you put a burr-ridden animal on a flushing beam, you will, rip it. you will rip that sucker wide open. And the reason is that burr is a hard spot underneath of that fur. And it doesn't even matter if you're using the sharp side or the dull side. Yeah, it, it, if you're shoving the fat off of that animal, it. it'll catch it and it'll put a, a quarter-sized hole in that hide, yeah, which, makes, which makes it worth less. So... You need to get one of these. And even if your animal doesn't have burrs in it, I like to have one just to make my hide look pretty yeah, before I sell it. It'll also pick off deer ticks and stuff like that. And I know it's I know it's that time of year where there shouldn't be none, but, but there are. There are still in them. Yeah. 
So you really should get a fur comb. They're cheap. Most of like all of these three side tools we showed you, they're all cheap. Yeah. A lifetime's tail stripper is only like ten bucks. Yeah. Compared to two or three dollars that you'll pay for a junk one. This so thing, bro, this thing it's like three dollars max. Yeah, if that. Yeah. So all of these side tools are cheap. Like if you're planning on putting up fur. I would get them. Yeah, like, it's, a, it's, a, it's a necessity. Yeah, you really, really need them. So make sure that you get a high quality fleshing knife. It's, it, it is a must. You need it. If you don't get a necker knife, please get something made by Weeby at least. Um, uh, and then these three side tools like the lifetime tail stripper, the fur comb, and the fur zipper are probably $25 max all put together. Yeah, so, they're not bad at all. Yeah, so those are just the tools that we use. Once again, you can use whatever knife that you want to use. I would just would get one that keeps a decent edge and isn't yeah. stupid hard to sharpen. Um, uh, I keep different size knives. I'll keep something about the size of a fillet knife. Um, and then for the smaller animals, I'll use like a two, two and a half, three inch blade. Um, it really just depends on what you like. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Adam's about ready to kill his children. So. Um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to cut it off here. Um, if you guys have any fur put up related questions, make sure that you get you can leave those questions in the comments. If you found this video helpful at all, you can leave us a like, subscribe. We're trying to hit that 500 sub mark, so um, if you could help us get there, it would be much appreciated. And just the same as always, have a good one. See ya.